Hiya. Uh, I'm here to show you some of the features of BlitzTick. Uh, we've got our game running at the moment. This is Dead to Rights. Uh, it's running on the 360 dev kit here. And at the same time, I've got BlitzTick open and we're using LiveLink to connect them up. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is the real-time lighting that we're using. As you can see at the moment, uh, we've got a fairly brightly lit environment. Uh, and I'm wanting to make this a bit dark, a bit more moody. But now with the uh, BlitzTech and using LiveLink, you can make those lighting changes instantly and see the effects in the engine. OK, now I've got our ambient level for the plaza area here. And that's quite high, so I'm just going to take that down. So the game world here is now instantly much darker after making that change in the editor. Now what I want to do is have a look at one of our spotlights. You're going to see that not only the lighting changes, but the shadows are all dynamic as well. So as I move the light, you can see the shadows. I can change the colour setting if I want. Obviously it's quite a strong effect. You see how easy it is just to get in and start tweaking values. In fact, one other thing that I can do from here is I can use the camera link. And what this does is that it syncs the editor window to the game window. So wherever I see on the editor is exactly what I see on the screen. So setting up cameras, positioning lights and other props is much faster because I can just jump into the editor and have the both screens synced. So now when I move the light around, I can get exactly to the vantage point that I want. And of course the game's still running. So I can move my character around and see exactly how the game runs all while I'm tweaking these settings. The other thing of course is that the camera link can work the other way around. So if I want to explore the world from our character's point of view, I can do so and then the changes will be fed back into the editor environment. So I can explore the world, find an area that I want to change. Let's have a look at the squad car. That brings me exactly to where I need to go in the editor. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is editing a texture. Browse to the texture in the database. I'm just going to open this up in Photoshop. Okay, so here we have our texture sheet. All I need to do is just make whatever change I want to the texture. Save that file, and we'll head back to editor, and we'll see that the change has instantly been carried across. Now, if we want to see this uh, reflected into the engine, all I need to do is to send it through LiveLink. So you can make any change you want to, in this case I've done a colour map, but you could change a normal map, you could change a specular map, and you'd see the changes reflected in the game environment. And again, it's without having to redeploy the level or change anything else, I can just make the change to the texture and see that carried across through to the game engine. Okay, one other thing I'd like to show you, uh, the effects in the game. Uh, these are all tweakable just like any other parameter via LiveLink. I'm going to select this little puff of steam we've got over here. Okay, that's not quite what I'm after, so I'm just going to jump into the editor and tweak some of the settings. I'm going to change the size, and I'm going to change the delta. Okay, and instantly you can see that the effects change, and that looks much better. You can change the colours and the materials as well. I'm just going to change the colour a bit. Okay, that's a bit strong. Here we go. That's exactly what I want. You can also change the motion of it. I don't want it to rise quite as high, so I'm going to change the gravity settings. Okay, and then I can change the horizontal movement. So you can see that it's slightly drifting across now. And you can sit here to your heart's content and change these parameters around, which is great, because a lot of the time you'll find that when you're making a game, it's the small tweaks that you want to do. So with the Blitz Tech, it makes it really easy just to jump in and have a play. OK, I'm going to show you some cool features of using Live Link between the Blitz Tech editor and the game. So as you can see, I'm currently running around in the level. And one of the excellent things we can do, which is fantastic in terms of games, uh, level design is we can move objects around in the editor and they move in the game at the same time in real time which is fantastic if we want to change the flow of a level so we can move objects like lights and cars around and also these sort of uh, bollard things we can even move 
large sections of the scenery, like these stairs. We can move huge objects, like these massive griffin things, all the way up to the entire facade of this building. All of it we can just shift around as we like, so we can design the levels on the fly almost. If I move up here, I can show you some cool stuff that we can do with physics. So we've got these boxes that were terribly neatly placed, but if I wanted to realistically place them as though a man had run through them, I can run through them in the game, and then if I fly over to them in the editor, select all the boxes, and click Get Transform, you can see in the editor they've taken the positions they were in the game. So I can set things up to look realistically knocked about the place without having to try and you know, guess it myself. Okay, next I'm gonna show you how we can affect not just the physical positions of things, but we can also do scripting and behaviors uh, live in real time, just the same. So as you can see, this lady, she's not responding to me at all because she's not been told to yet. But I can just select her in the editor and put what we call a state machine on her. The state machines are our uh, really visual scripting system that's incredibly powerful and useful for designers to be able to just quickly knock out complicated scripts. And as I shall show you, get them running in real time. So on this condition, I'm gonna say, this happens. Our nose within distance is Jack, that's our handsome lead male, within a hundred units of self, which is this lady here. If so, I'm going to make her fall over as though from emotion of being so close to him. Uh, and then I just hit send, update and reset. And then as I walk up to her, she should. Yep, there she goes. Now that time round, she'll only do that once. But if I want to now make it so that every time I walk up to her, she falls over, all I have to do is loop that round, send an update again. And now every time I walk up to her, she'll fall over, she'll get back up, she'll fall over, she'll get back up. And it's as simple as that.